speaking of, on the Democratic side, that the the post-Trump Democrats are very different from the pre-Trump Democrats. We have come as close to yeah. fascism as we want to come in America, and we're not putting up with any of the nonsense anymore. A warning from January 6th committee member, the Democratic congressman from Maryland, Jamie Raskin, but the nonsense he refers to seems far from over. The twice impeached retired former president attempting to amplify his reach with a new social media platform called Truth Social. As former GOP strategist Steve Schmidt aptly put it, and we quote, Trump's truth is a hideous deception, a mirage cloaked in cynicism and malice. Indeed, back with us tonight is Steve Schmidt, longtime political strategist who led John McCain's 08 campaign, has since left the Republican Party, is among the, among the founders of the Lincoln Project, which set out, of course, to defeat Trump and Trumpism, a job that goes on to this day. Uh, great to have you with us. I'd like to ask you a dual question, both of which I've asked several guests this week. If democracy has a clock face, if it ends at midnight, what time is it now? The second part of the question is, are the Democrats, in your candid opinion, up to this? Well, let me let me ask let me answer uh, the second part of that that first, Brian, and it's good to see you. Um, objectively, since the insurrection on January six, the Republican Party is far more radical, far more committed to the lie that Trump has told, um, fully committed to the authoritarian movement. And should the events repeat themselves, uh, the Republican Party is much in a much different place than it was this past election with regard to being prepared to try to subvert the legal and lawful results, right? The Democrats have done nothing um, since coming into office, not on the question of voting rights, not on the question of ethics reform. They have done nothing to prevent any of the abuses that we've seen, done nothing to harden any of the infrastructure and so what the Democrats are going to have to do now in this next year is to lay out the case about a danger. And it's important to remember there's only been three elections in the last 120 years where the incumbent president's party has picked up seats in the, um, in the, in the, in the first part of the election. Um, the, the clock, Brian, there, there's, a, there's a moment on the second day at Gettysburg where that, that clock moves within 15 seconds of midnight, within a few minutes of the Republic being extinguished. Uh, we are in trouble. We have a real-life autocratic movement alive and well in the United States. Uh, we have a political party that seems committed uh, to the project of taking power regardless of what the what the results are. Um, this all rests on faith and belief. And, and that's what's been poisoned over the last year. So so we're in trouble. Um, but uh, in the end, uh, what is has always been the case is democracies rally late uh, in defense faced with these type of movements. But it's a serious moment. Why, in your view, uh, having heard heard your answer out just there, has there been such an appalling lack of consequences? And is it the cost of good intentions, as I always say? Is it because Democrats culturally tend to be former student council presidents who just happen to be involved in a gunfight with killers every day? Um. We've had some hardcore Democratic leaders in this uh, country's history who haven't lacked uh, for toughness uh, in the moment. In the, in the aftermath of the Second World War, when he was writing his memoirs, you know, Churchill uh, described it as the unnecessary war. And when he talked about the rise of fascism in retrospect, he said the malice of the wicked uh, was aided by the weakness of the virtuous. Um, none of this is unpredictable. Um, we have hundreds of pieces of malice legislation intended to deny people on the basis of skin color the right to vote. Um, we have hundreds of pieces of legislation uh, that have been filed aimed to nullify the results of a legal election 
uh, to declare the loser the winner and other extreme politics and policies as we've seen this abandonment of a commitment to small l liberal tradition and policies um, to the American Republic, to, to the idea of democracy. And again, it's important to understand democracy is the only moral form of government that's ever been, uh, because it's the only system of government that's ever been that places the individual, the human being, on top of the power of the state. All others place the state on top of the human being, and that usually ends with disaster. Steve, what are we doing wrong that we could be doing better? I have noticed in the news media business, this this false equivalence reporting is sneaking back in like nothing ever happened, like we woke up in 1978, all the old rules and all the old politicians uh, were back in action. What can the media do to better enforce the idea this was an attempt to change the outcome of a presidential election? Uh, and as one of your colleagues put it tonight, only one political party now remains in service to that democracy you just spoke of. Well, I, I think it's incumbent on the political leadership of the country to be able to speak out in favor of these values. Uh, the, re the reality is... Um, these ideas have sustained the country uh, through all manner of crisis for more than 245 years, and they're being challenged. They're being contested. They need to be defended. Um, the assertion of the values that built the country and calling out the dividers, it's, it's an important moment. I mean, we have a real-life extremist moment, uh, uh, moment in this country, a real-life movement in this country, it has to be has to be confronted, has to be confronted directly and honestly and contextually, understanding that this isn't the first time we've seen move, movements like this arise. Um, we've seen this before. Um, and the fact of the matter is, uh, turns out there were hot embers under these ash heaps that we thought were extinguished. And so um, this moment requires, as have previous moments, political leaders who can talk about, one, what we have in common, uh, but the, the profound importance in the defense of the governmental systems that protect human dignity, human life, the pursuit of happiness. That's what's at stake. Democrats indeed may need to channel the energy of the steer over your shoulder uh, in favor uh, uh, of the uh, donkey, which is their longtime logo. Steve Schmidt, what a pleasure to have you as always. Thank you very much.